first speaker, Bindi Korea. Bindi is like us students from the CDTM, very passionate about technology and entrepreneurship. She has been around the European tech scene for quite some while, for example, leading what is now Microsoft Ventures in the UK. And she was also nicknamed the Queen of Startups by various media. And she will now give us some very personal insights into her life with the talk, I'm Like Water. Please welcome Bindi Carrillo on stage. There's a lot of you here. It's amazing. <laughs> so before I start, um, how many of you are sort of technical students and how many of you are entrepreneurship type students? Just curious to get um, insight into what of you are all from. So deeply technical? <laughs> wow, okay. And how many of you? You are. Yeah, I know you are. <laughs> um, and how many of you are thinking about starting your own business? Oh, this is awesome. Okay. Okay, so I'm going to talk to you a little bit about a very, very personal story of mine. And it's going to be like this. My name is Bindi, and I am like water. Now, when I say water, it's like you hit a brick wall, and you do whatever it takes to get through the brick wall, whether it's under, over, through, you continue hitting that brick wall, but like water, you always get through. And guess what? Why do I say that? Because I feel so many entrepreneurs are like water. And I feel such a kinship to that. They hit that brick wall, they innovate their way through that brick wall, but like water, they always get through. Myself personally, I'm a bridge builder, I'm a connector, and I'm going to tell you my life story to explain why I feel I have so much in common with entrepreneurs and how I've worked with almost thousands of entrepreneurs um, through my career. It's my life, it's my driver, and I'm going to tell you why. So let's start with my roots. So despite my accent, <laughs> I am a child of the British Empire. My background is Indian but I'm also Kenyan, British, and Canadian. I went to school in Canada, so that's, that's where the accent comes from. <laughs> Mel's cheering up front. <laughs> so let's start with my great-grandfathers. My great-grandfathers were put on the British boats from Gujarat, which is where Gandhi is from. And they're on the similar boats to Gandhi, and they actually came down the Indian Ocean off to the coasts of Africa. My great-grandfathers hopped off in Mombasa, ended up in Nairobi, and on those same boats before World War I, um, Gandhi ended up down in South Africa to go to university. A generation later, pre-World War II, my grandfathers came from that exact voyage, again on the British boats, from Gujarat to Mombasa. And they landed there, and they married my grandmothers who were born there. And my parents were born and raised in Nairobi. They were there when Princess Elizabeth became Queen Elizabeth. Um, and if any of you watch Netflix, and I don't know if you get The Crown uh, at Netflix in Germany, but it's a wonderful story about the history of Queen Elizabeth and the young queen. And my parents were there in Nairobi as the princess crossed that body of water from the UK to Kenya and became the queen that she is today. And that body of water is symbolic of my life. When my dad was 16, he won a scholarship, a Duke of Edinburgh scholarship, as British as you get. He went to Manchester in the United Kingdom, got his degree there, and went back to Kenya, married my mother, and came back to the United Kingdom where I was born. When I was five, my father fell in love with the mountains, the Canadian Rockies. So across we went to um, Alberta. So the biggest city you'll know there is Calgary, the Olympics in 1988. And so it was all of that symbolism of crossing the water from India to Kenya, to the United Kingdom, to Canada. And it's those big bodies of water and those big bridges, to me, 
that makes us understand what brick walls are about. Secondly, I'm going to talk about loss and adversity. And I'll try not to break here. <laughs> so when I first moved to Canada, um, I was in a very small town of 5,000 people, 10,000 cows, <laughs> a lot of oil wells, because Alberta is about oil and agriculture. And unfortunately, um, the Ku Klux Klan and Aryan nations settled in that part of Canada. And I was the only non-white person in the village. So that was my first brick wall, age five, landing somewhere where I was different, I was an immigrant, I had a very bizarre British accent, and I got bullied for it. But throughout my childhood, my parents taught me, you come from overseas, you come from over different bodies of water, and you have to work twice as hard to go half as far. And you must remember that. And as a child, they used to send me as an unaccompanied minor, a bit like Paddington Bear. <laughs> and they'd send me to the United Kingdom, and they'd send me to Nairobi. And I grew up knowing that there was always no boundaries and no brick walls. And that was my first one. My next brick wall was when I was 19. And at 19, my mother got diagnosed with cancer, uh, terminal cancer. And what was really crazy about that is she had the worst form, pancreatic cancer, and they gave her six weeks to live. And I think my mother's non-drinking, non-smoking, Indian vegetarian, and how is she getting the worst form of cancer? How is this fair? This is yet another brick wall that I've hit. And what I learned was astounding in that period. She did end up living five more months, but over that period of five months was probably the most powerful thing I've ever experienced. My family came across giant bodies of water, and they came to see her, because she was that person who was the connector. They came from Australia, India, Canada, US, United Kingdom, parts of Europe. One by one, they came to see her, and it was the most amazing thing, and I learned this is a brick wall, but it doesn't matter because it's the power of family and, and connecting that's really the important thing. The last person that came to see my mom was my grandmother, who was living in Bombay at the time. And she came across, and that trip, unfortunately, um, she passed away of a heart attack. So my entire family came across from all over the world again, big bodies of water, and we did her cremation in Western Canada. Six weeks later, my mother passed away. And you know what? <laughs> my entire family came right back. They all got back on the same planes and they all came back. All eight of my dad's brothers and sisters from all over the world and they crossed those bodies of water. And the amazing lesson I learned at that point in time was, who cares about the brick walls? <laughs> It doesn't matter, it's just water. And we're gonna cross it. And I learned the power of family and connecting. Bridges were built. And seven days later, after my mother's funeral, I went back to university. Got two degrees, because I knew I didn't care it was a brick wall. I knew my mother wanted me to go out and get those degrees and be successful. And I really love that this was a tiger, because, you know, my mother was a tiger mother. She, she really encouraged me to drive and like just be very successful. And she taught me that it doesn't matter what those brick walls are. So the day I finished university in Canada, I moved back to the United Kingdom, back to London, which is my home to this day. And it's, I'm very, very passionate about London. Um, we'll talk about Brexit in a second. <laughs> I'm still a European, just so you know. <laughs> um, point was, as I came to London, I didn't know a soul. So I, I crossed that body of water and I hit yet another brick wall. I had a degree, I now had a funny accent that was Canadian, not British, and I had to get my first job. And despite that brick wall, despite having no money, despite not knowing people, I landed my first job. And it's because of what I learned from my time as a child and from my global family and the power of connecting. And so that brings me now to career adversity. And I think this is where it's relevant for all of you guys. I've had lots of bumps in my career. 
I've had a lot of brick walls in my career. I was at PwC Consulting in 2000, and that was the time when the first dot-com bomb happened. I don't know if half of you were born yet. <laughs> I was certainly working in my first job. <laughs> no, I know you, some of you, a lot were born, but you were like children at that point. It was not pretty in 2000. And at the time, I was actually working as a very small tech incubator, PwC incubator. But of course, with the market crash, I was chucked out. IBM had bought that part of the consulting business, and I was on the street, and I hit another brick wall. But I knew, because of my upbringing, I'm like, water, I'm going to get through that wall. So eventually, I landed in a very interesting, high-growth fintech startup. And that was a roller coaster of fun and entrepreneurship. And I was there as employee 15 to about 80 employees. And then I jumped ship because it's a career move. And I moved to a very small, um, I guess, advisory and investment bank called Interregnum. And in Latin, that means between reigns, <laughs> as in the queen. And what happened there is that firm fell to pieces. And so all of a sudden, I was back out on the street, and I hit another wall. At that point, I was like, I need a safe job. So I ended up at Microsoft for eight years. And I ended up running what is now known as Microsoft Ventures in London for five years. So I spent a lot of that wonderful time working with entrepreneurs, learning from entrepreneurs, advising entrepreneurs, connecting entrepreneurs and using my knowledge of having and being running into brick walls for so long and teaching them that they can do that as well. Particularly the first time founders. The experienced ones didn't need someone like me. <laughs> um, and then I left Microsoft and joined uh, a very amazing Silicon Valley based organization called Silicon Valley Bank. But this was sort of my last brick wall. So about 18 months ago I realized I'm not meant to be a banker. <laughs> and that's okay. And I, it's a wonderful company and a wonderful team. But I hit a fundamental self-realization. So this was my own brick wall that was inside of me. And so what did I do? I quit the bank. <laughs> and I took all the lessons that I learned and the inspirations I had gained from all the founders. And I realized my only journey for now was to become an entrepreneur myself. So that brings me to where I am today and what I'm doing. I'm very early in my business. I'm hitting brick walls every day. Um, and, and many founders in the front row, I can see you're all laughing, you've been there. Um, but really what I'm trying to do is build an advisory firm. Going back to my family roots of connecting and engaging and relationship building. And I'm trying to do that with corporates with startups, with venture capitalists, and with government. And every project I take is about connecting to enable these people to grow and build bridges between each other and like water flowing with each other. So that's where I am today. My name is Bindi, and I am like water.